we are about um, 117 hours into this build and I just uh, sealed up this here inner portion of the rear spar and uh, ran it up along the sides but I didn't seal anything here this here's where the uh, the front side of the spar glues onto the um, the rib upright and the that upright that I fitted them over whenever I was cutting that 15 degree angle on it so anyways I got all the hardware and all the hardware is attached except these there's a mistake I made okay I was assuming okay yeah it's, it's on one side build that up even well you got the hole comes through halfway in in the uh, spar cap I'm not sure why they do that but that's how the print shows it right on the split line of that for some reason and uh, so this here has to be built up otherwise you're gonna have a bolt half on and half off the spar cap so I got to build this up and then I'll put the the uh, jury strut attach points on attach brackets on it and uh, tomorrow I guess we can start putting ribs on it now many of the bolts on wooden aircraft you do not need to torque you just need to bring them tight um, you don't want to over torque them but on things like the spars um, well many of them like this and, and other mounting uh, bolts um, where you're not crushing the wood where your torque isn't going to be crushing the wood you want to use a torque uh, for quarter 28 which is your AN4 bolts you've got about 50 to 70 inch pounds and I just to overcome the locking nut I just go to the top end of the torque value because very seldom is it more than a couple of inch pounds you can you can test it and and yourself but it's usually with the AN3 bolts it's about one to two inch pounds um, maybe three with a quarter 20 it's never more than five inch pounds and your value is 20 your your uh, um, your range is 20 so you might as well just use go to the top end and you know you're not over torquing it but yet you know you've got the full torque because the nut the locking device only takes up about five inch pounds so that's what I do I set it towards the high end if not 70 at least 65 and you're well above the 50 inch pounds so but I do torque all of all of the uh, hardware on the the uh, wing and anything anything where I'm not going to uh, concerned about drawing like washers down through the nuts like when you when you attach your pulleys you're not going to want to fully tor torque your uh, you're going to build this up and uh, and uh, put your pulleys in here for your cables aileron cables and you're not going to want to draw your your washers down into the wood very much just you just want them seated in there good that's it so now I've got to get my back wall cleaned off I've got to get my tail feathers somewhere else might have to move that toolbox because my wing print hangs up back there and it covers that whole back wall and incidentally once again I'll offer all of that Miranda uh, hardware there um, parts there that's uh, the forward and aft spar for the horizontal stabilizer and all of the ribs for the horizontal stabilizer and for the elevator if anybody wants them just per private message me Diedrich Soren on Diedrich Sorensen on Facebook but uh, or messenger but anyways yeah that's next gonna have a wing 
And one more time, I'm doing a glue up joint, scarf joints, and I'm doing the one to five ratio, just like my original tests were years ago. And I never had the scarf joint break, but on the uh, wooden aviation group on Facebook, if you're not a member of it and you're interested in wooden aircraft, uh, wooden aviation group, it's, um, that's specifically what it is, wooden airplanes. But they had a post on there, and one of the guys contacted 3, or, or uh, 3M? No, not 3M. System 3 about uh, having crystallized or uh, cloudy um, part A um, in their, ep their epoxy. And mine has been that way the last two bottles that I've gotten. And so they say that the remedy for this, and it can be an issue, so the remedy is to warm it up for about, oh, 20 or 30 seconds, a couple of 20 or 30 second uh, periods in the microwave, just enough to warm it up and get it kind of evenly warmed up. Mine turned totally translucent, I mean perfectly clear when I did that, got it warmed up. So I did that and I'm redoing this test. Now it's commercial white ash which is very strong and it's a little more difficult to get the glue joint to be stronger than the wood. Nonetheless, my original tests, and that was with really high um, specific gravity white ash, so it was really strong white ash and every time the wood broke instead of the joint so i'm going to see if i can duplicate that the way i did originally